replay in the comments. That means if you don't see that little live button, it's on replay. So please tell me hello and how you're doing. Um, so I've got to adjust these cameras because they're too far apart and it's giving me anxiety. So y'all give me a second because it's hard to focus on two cameras with y'all being two separate. Can you see me in that camera? Yes. I'm sorry, guys. Hello, hello. How are y'all? Okay. Is that better? Can you see me? Okay. Sorry, we are in a rush. I had to go to the dentist this afternoon, and so it's kind of a madhouse. I apologize. Hello, hello, everybody. We are Facebook and YouTube. So when you come on, tell me hello. Tell me how you're doing. Tell me where you're from. Victoria is here with me. You know, I couldn't do this without Victoria. I don't give her enough credit, but I could not do this without my people um, because I, I can't read and design and all the things. So she is a blessing from heaven. So we are going to make a large arrangement in this container. So the other day, I actually used a container are very similar to this um, on, was that Monday's Live, Victoria, with the fresh plants? Um, yeah. uh, I think it was, yeah. was it Monday? Anyway, they people asked me um, where we found this container. This one came from Walmart. So they do still have those containers available at Walmart. This is a much larger piece. Um, it's a pretty good size. I don't even know the diameter. I think it's like 14 to 16 inches across. It is actually holding three blocks of fresh floral foam. Um, and what I've done is I've soaked the blocks of foam and I have taped them into place so that they're not going to go anywhere. This is an arrangement that's actually going to go to a home for a sympathy. So, um, we're going to add lots of flowers. It's going to surprise you at how many flowers we're going to get in this guy. Um, we're going to start out with some eucalyptus. So, I'm just going to take my snips. Are you seeing me, Victoria? Is everybody seeing me? <laughs> I don't know. I feel kind of in a tizzy this afternoon, which is so silly. But every once in a while, you feel like you're in a tizzy. So I'm just taking my eucalyptus, and I'm just going to kind of come all the way around in this floral foam. Now, anytime you're using floral foam, you're going to always want to make sure it's soaked, okay? Don't put fresh flowers in dry floral foam because it's just going to clog those stems. Now a flower, its stem is just like a straw, a drinking straw, and it actually, that stem actually drinks all the, all the water up to the head of the flower. If you tried to put fresh flowers into dry foam, it's just going to clog that, um, that stem and it will not be able to drink. So make sure anytime you're using fresh foam that it is soaked. Um, you have lots of hellos. Hello, guys. Hello, hello. So glad y'all are here with us this afternoon. Um, Gray says, if you ever get a chance, come to Charlotte, North Carolina and go to the Billy Graham Library. It is neat. You will love it. Oh, I um, bet so. I bet it's wonderful. Miss Marianne Covert says, love the YouTube lemon design. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. I didn't realize that Owen had that up already. That Owen's quick. Uh, Miss Janice Spack Sloan says, I see the live button. So happy to catch you live. Yay. Blessings to each of you. Yes, she's a blessing. I love you all. Thank you, Miss Janice. Thank you, thank you. We love you too, sweet friend. I hope you're feeling better. Okay. So I'm just adding some eucalyptus all the way around that edge. I'm going to leave some here and we'll add more in just a bit. But there's our eucalyptus all the way around in this container, okay? Next we're going to come in with, let's see what we got next. I've got some iliagnus that Callie went out and cut. So I'm going to take my iliagnus. So Iliagnus here is a shrub, and I just threw it at you, Victoria. So it is a shrub, and it's actually starting to put off some new growth. So these little shoots are the new growth. Thank you. Um, and so we're going to give some structure and height to this arrangement with some of this new growth. I'm going to take and strip off 
um, some of that foliage. And I'm gonna use my snips because, um, because it's really woody. And I'm afraid that um, it's gonna be hard to cut with a knife. So I'm just taking my snips and I'm cutting that stem. Um, Catherine Farrington says, want to thank you and all of your devotional friends for the prayers for my daughter who had surgery on Monday. She is doing great and is feeling good too. Thank you all. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that, Catherine. Thank you for letting us know and we will continue to say a prayer for her. Okay, so I'm just taking these shoots and I'm kind of using them. I wonder if I move, do you think I should move? What does it look like on your phone? Should I move this door from behind me so you could kind of see? Or is it okay? I think it's fine. Okay. If it gets to where it's distracting. Mm -hmm. So you can see these shoots. They're just going to work as, um, as line flower or a little bit of structure to this arrangement. Uh, Miss Julie says, Monty, did you get a haircut? You're looking great today. Why, thank you, friend. I got a haircut last week. <laughs> But it's this hair is driving me crazy. I don't. I can't get it to do a thing. Why is it you go through stages of not getting your hair to do a thing? I don't know why. But yes, Mama cut it. What was it last Thursday? Somewhere in there. All right. So I've just taken this Iliagnus, and it's just kind of giving us some fun movement in this arrangement. And I'm just taking my snips. And cutting it. Now, Illy Agnes is, <laughs> I, did, I use Illy Agnes a lot, like if I'm making an arbor in a wedding. Um, and I can remember, I bet Catherine will be on this afternoon. I can remember going and doing a wedding in um, Vicksburg, Mississippi, and I had cut tons of Illy Agnes and brought it. And there was a little man there, and he was a gardener, and he said, Illy Agnes is a gardener's nightmare. I said, well, it's a florist friend. <laughs> he just laughed at me. And he said, because it puts off all of these shoots, this new growth, and it drives a gardener crazy, he said. But he was so funny. I said, we love Illy Agnes. Um, but it really works wonderful, especially when you're working with, um, with big arbors and stuff. As it grows and as it matures, these stems get really full of leaves. And so it works so wonderful. And it holds up out of water beautifully. And so it's really great foliage. Okay, the next flower we're gonna use are these beautiful green hydrangeas. And you know what, Miss Victoria? I do not have the quick dip. So I'm gonna have to grab that. Um, it should be in a little jar. John Miller says you can see better with the door behind the arrangement. You can, Dawn? Okay, good. That's it. Thanks. So my mom is here. She's mm -hmm. watching the live, live. <laughs> <laughs> so she's just sitting over there quietly watching. <laughs> Thank you, Mama. All right. So these are called, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think they're Esmeralda or Esmeralda green hydrangeas. So if you look at them real close, they're fantastic. They're really, really large, large, large heads. And you can see that variegation in that color. It's got um, kind of a white in the center of the, each little bloom, and then that beautiful green. So we're gonna take these. I'm gonna cut that stem. I removed that foliage. And I'm gonna cut that stem at an angle with my floral knife. Up it in this quick dip. Now, I had someone ask on TikTok if I ever used alum to dip my hydrangeas in. I don't, but alum works wonderful. Um, quick Dip is actually a, basically the same. It's just a liquid form, I think. It does the same thing to keep that head, um, keep that head hydrated. So it's really doing the same thing alum does. I don't know if they even have the same components or anything like that, but I do know that it works well and alum does the same thing. Um, so all I'm doing is kind of fluffing that stem, cutting it at an angle, and dipping it right down into that quick dip. I usually count to about seven or so. And I'm just pressing that hydrangea right into that floral foam. 
Um, Miss Frankie, they're saying hello. Hi. <laughs> Mama ran away from home this afternoon, and she went to visit a friend. And I said, now, Mama, I'm going live. I'll see you later. And she just pulled her up a chair. <laughs> She's sitting in here watching. <laughs> Um, Miss Mary Lou asks, um, where has Mr. Osa been? Osa, it's beautiful here in Mississippi. It has been beautiful outside. So he's spending a whole lot of time outside. But I think he's in the back room asleep in his chair. Wow. You don't see him? He may have gone out with the boys. Owen and Jason just left and Callie left. So he probably went outside. He, um, if it's pretty, that's where he wants to be. He'll come in and rest a little while, and then he wants to go out. Um, the Lyrical Lily says, want to share a praise with you. My dad was very sick in the fall with met metastatic yes. cancer in his chest, brain, and spine. Oh, wow. He chose to only do immunotherapy and radiation because he's 82. He had an MRI and PET scan this week, and he is clear. Oh, that is wonderful news. I am so glad to hear that. Praise God, that's wonderful. Um, Eva Williamson says, Hi, Flower Family. Glad to be here today. Have a special request for prayer if you could put me on your list. I know there is never a prayer he doesn't answer. Absolutely. We will certainly do it. Yes, ma'am. So I'm just going all the way around. We're going to make this pretty all the way around, this arrangement. Uh, Miss Julie says, my hubby and I are feeling better, but I got some not so good news at the ne neurologist. Oh, Julie, I'm sorry to hear that. We are still keeping you in our prayers, and I'm glad you're feeling better, sweet friend. Uh, Miss Pat says she's happy to be with you. Love your designs and hearing your stories. So glad you're here. Thank you for watching, Miss Pat. Thank you for being here. All right, so I've got one more hydrangea. Um, Rhea Norman says that she had a silly accident yesterday. Um, she says she wanted to make fruit smoothies for the family, and her food processor was on the top shelf. Her husband told her he had not put it together properly, and so she pulled it down and it fell on her head. She says, I have a big bump, a broken processor bowl, and today a brand new all singing and dancing processor with a blender oh, worth the I'm bump. I'm so sorry, <laughs> Rhea. Goodness gracious. I'm so sorry, but I'm glad you're okay, and I'm glad you got a new one. <laughs> Bless your heart. Rhea has the best, um, the best recipe. She's always telling us what she's eating. So, um, we're coming to visit Rhea one day. <laughs> we're just going to show up. Okay, so we've got our beautiful hydrangeas all the way around. I'm um, just kind of low and, and fun. Next, we're going to come in with some bells of Ireland. So, I've got lots of bells. Whoop, 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 whoop. So let's put our pretty bales. So these are going to be our heights. So we're going to take, and I'm pinching the tips out. Um, I'm going to take my floral knife, cut that stem at an angle. And we're just going to go tall with our bales kind of in the center. Um, Ms. Sharon Wood asks if this is for an order. She's watching from Mexico, New York. Yes, ma'am. This is for an order. Um, they called, and it's actually for a sympathy. So they wanted an arrangement to go to the home. And um, so this is just a very large arrangement that will go to the home. Most of the time when you see something like this, I'm sending it to Mama's house. Um, <laughs> Mama usually gets the impressive arrangements because we don't often get orders um, for such large showy arrangements. So Mama and um, Miss Anne Marie get all of our showy arrangements just because I enjoy making them. Um, so you can see I'm just taking and I'm pinching the tip out of that um, bale. I'm cutting that stem at an angle, and these are all just kind of going all the way around in this floral foam. Um, Angie Ham says, loving this video. You're a great teacher. Oh, thank you, friend. Um, Rhea says, the green hydrangeas are beautiful. Aren't they amazing? Oh, they're so, so lovely. Okay, I've got a few more bales of Ireland. 
So Callie and I um, counted out all our flowers. So we've ju I've just got them in a bucket over here to make it easy for me to um, stuff all under my feet. Um, Rhea says trick dianthus. I love the green flowers. We do have trick dianthus. We do, we do. Um, Miss Cheryl, my mama, my my mama got the cabbage arrangement. Yes, Victoria's mama got the cabbage arrangement. And she was very excited. Was she excited? Yeah. I wonder what she thought of it. She loved it. She was very, yeah, she was excited. <laughs> so Victoria and I are in the right business for our mamas. Because <laughs> our mamas really like flowers. We appreciate it. <laughs> Jason's mama, though, she's so funny. I don't really want flowers. <laughs> like, well, you're getting them. I'm a florist. You have to have flowers. <laughs> <laughs> well, they just die. They may, It makes her sad when they die. And so I usually give her plants. Um, but Victoria's mama loves flowers as much as my mama. So it's fun to take flowers to or send flowers to people who love them as much as, as our mama's. Um, Miss Barbara Neal asks, did you clip for Scythia? I did. Well, not for Scythia. I, for Scythia would have been beautiful. Thank you, darling. Mm -hmm. For Scythia would have been beautiful, but I didn't. And let me tell you why. With an arrangement that is going to go out to a customer, I like to use longer lasting blooms. And I found, especially with Mama being my um, guinea pig, when I cut the for Scythia and the Spirea, it did not last but so up just a few days in that foam and I knew it wouldn't I knew it was gonna be um, not so happy in the foam and those um, the daffodils only lasted what three days mama maybe and mama's a good waterer so it wasn't because it wasn't well watered it's just the fact that they don't love foam and so when you're sending an arrangement to a client or to a customer you want to make sure you're gonna send the longest lasting blooms so that's the reason I didn't use any um, blooming brand this time. Next we're going to come in with, let's see, let's do our green trick dianthus. So I told you earlier in the week that dianthus is in the carnation family. They kind of look like they're little, I'm going to move us over a little bit. Um, they look like little Dr. Seuss trees. Just the fun, fun, fun. And these are bigger than we usually get. It's a really big in diameter. Um, but it's, they're fun little flowers. So I'm just going to take them and I'm gonna cut them at an angle and we're just gonna kind of mound them right down here with our hydrangeas. So it's just gonna kind of be a little mounded. Uh, Miss Donna asks, why did you tip, or why did you pinch the tips off of the bells? Well, first of all, for me personally, I just think they look prettier, honestly, with the tips pulled out. Um, but second of all, when you pinch that tip, it causes those bells to want to straighten up. They'll not be so leany, um, and I just think it looks better. Oh, that one broke, so we're not going to use him. I don't think so. I think I have plenty of flowers. But really, for me personally, when you get to um, Bells of Ireland, I just think they look prettier without that little um, fluff of greenery at the tip. So that's the reason I pinch it out. There's really no right or wrong. You can't mess it up. If you like it, leave it. It's completely okay if you want to leave it. Um, Wayne Winnegar Sr. asks, was this designer's choice or did they give you specifics for the, the this design? This is a designer's choice. They just gave me an amount of money and they said make something beautiful. And I said, thanks. I can do that. Oh, Miss Dottie sent 99 stars. Thank you, Miss Dottie. Thank you. Thank you for the stars. All right, let's come in with, so these are moms that remind me so much of a dahlia, or a dahlia, however you want to say that. Now, the one thing about a dahlia, though, is they're not very long-lasting flowers. Um, very, very temperamental. Um, they're not so happy in foam, and they have very small, um, small stems. But look at this mom and how much it looks like a dahlia. It looks just like it, doesn't it? And this peachy color I thought was absolutely gorgeous. So we're going to use these. Another thing is they last a lot longer and they're a lot less expensive and they're just so pretty. Um, so I love to substitute um, dahlias with beautiful moms. Um, now, of course, I always talk to the, if, if it was for a wedding or such, I'm always going to talk to the client first, but for this, I 
I got um, full reign to design however I wanted to. So therefore, we're going to. They are. So this is a pretty color. We got in some of the prettiest colored mums too. Like our uh, mums really came in such beautiful colors. Um, this Linda Worcester says, "Yay! I caught you on a live show. To be honest, some days your videos are the only thing that make me smile. Aww. I lost my daughter on October 30th, and I'm not." sorry to hear that and I'm so thankful that we're here and we can spend time together and we will keep you in our prayers I know that that cannot be easy um, Donna Douglas asks do hydrangeas last long in Oasis it's such a beautiful arrangement I love it as long as they're well hydrated they will last a good long time um, we it, They've surprised me before <laughs> where they've lasted so long. So I just kind of did small groupings of those mums. You can kind of see when I turn the um, turntable, you can see I just did small groupings of those mums here and there. Really all the flowers, it always depends on the hydration and how much hydration they're going to have. Next, we're gonna come in with some garden roses. So these roses came from, gosh, what was the name of this farm? Donna just went to this farm, Alexandria Farm. Um, and they specialize specifically in garden roses and dahlias. And so um, they are absolutely beautiful. Now I am not going to manipulate these roses. A lot of times you can take a garden, if you leave it out for an amount of time, you can blow it and get it to open up really, really wide. They're going to do that on their own. So often if I want an arrangement to last longer for my customer, I try not to blow my roses. Um, and I'll tell you, when you go to a store and you go to buy roses, anytime you're going to purchase roses and you want them to last the longest for you, you're always going to take it and just kind of squeeze it right there um, at the widest part of the rose. Um, now, if it's firm, that means it'll last longer. If it's soft, it means it doesn't have as much life. So I do my best not to manipulate too much when it's going to a customer so that they can enjoy the flowers as long as possible. Now, if we were doing this for a party and party work, we want it to be its absolutely prettiest at the time that they receive the flowers. And so we may blow those roses and get them real large and showy, um, but because this is actually going to go to a home and they'll be able to enjoy it for a, a period of time, I'm not going to blow these roses. But they will get as large as these mums. They're just going to open up and just be a really big and showy rose. Um, Rhonda Hilton says, my daughter always gives me her first blooms as she grows all varieties of proteas, etc. I just love those flowers. Aren't they fun? Yes, bless it. My mama has always got it, even when I wasn't any good. <laughs> even when they were pitiful little arrangements. Mama's always been my biggest cheerleader. And she'd say, it's gorgeous, honey. It's mm -hmm. so pretty. And there were times when she kept them too long, and I thought, mama, that's an ugly, dried arrangement. We've got to get rid of that. But I think even in the attic, she still has some of my um, my first dried arrangements in floral design. And I'm like, Mama, this has got to go. You cannot keep this forever. It is pretty. Miss <laughs> um, Lanise Carter says, now we know why your mother encouraged you to become a florist, to be able to enjoy your extras. That's right. That's right. You know, I don't know if she even knew how much she loved flowers until, <laughs> until I became a florist. Now, when I was a little girl, my grandmother always grew flowers, and my mama's mama, and she was a, she loved flowers. She was in the garden club, and she always arranged flowers, and so I can remember going to her house, and we'd go out and pick flowers, and, and we'd arrange flowers, and I, she did that when mama was a little girl, too, so I think maybe it brings back memories of being a little girl and having her mama grow pretty flowers. Um, Miss Margaret Lynch 
Um, says she's going to the specialist with her knee tomorrow and would love some prayers. So glad to hear that, Miss Margaret. We will certainly keep you in our prayers. We sure will. Mike Shore asks if you wire the roses. These have been wired. Yes, Callie actually wired them before. Thank you, Mike, for saying that. Um, Callie, and I didn't mention it, but Callie wired all our roses before I got started. Um, we just thought it was easier when you're making such a large arrangement. It's easier if we go ahead and do that ahead of time. And so, yes, Callie wired them all for me. Um, Rhea asks if you ever use celosia flowers. She says, not my favorite flowers at all. They look like brains. <laughs> now, there are different varieties of celosia. And so, um, celosia would be coxcomb. We call it, our common name here is coxcomb. Or, um, there's also another variety that we would call a prince's feather. And so, it kind of has a little feathery effect. Um, not a whole lot. I don't use it a whole lot. And it's just because... Um, my company doesn't really carry it, but every, every once in a while, Mary, my sweet friend from Petal Row, she grows celosia, and she'll bring and let us, um, let us use some of her pretty flowers. Okay, so the flowers so far that we have used in this arrangement, and we still have quite a few more, we have used the um, green hydrangeas, those beautiful esmeralda green hydrangeas. We've used a peachy colored mum that looks so much like a dahlia, it makes me so happy. Green Ireland, these peach colored garden roses, and they will open up and look more like a garden effect. I just wanted to leave them as tight as possible for the client. And then this is called Green Trick Dianthus. So Dianthus is the family that carnations come from, and that's Green Trick Dianthus. And then our greenery seeded eucalyptus and a little bit of... Um, Iliagnus, my mind went blank for half a second. Okay, now let's come in with a little bit of color. And our color, and I hope that this is all gonna blend, but I thought this is for a gentleman who passed away. And so I thought we would use these deep, oh, there's a trick. He was hiding, we'll tuck him in. Um, sorry, I got mm -hmm. squirrel. <laughs> Um, I thought that we would tuck in some of these beautiful deep red roses. So this is called a heart rose, and it's really called it's really supposed to be a um, everyday a standard what we would call a standard. It has a huge petal count, so when it opens up, it will get as big as a dessert plate. Um, and so it has lots and lots of petals, so it reminds me a whole lot of a garden rose. And it, because of so many petals, and it opens up beautifully. But if you look real close, and I don't know, if you look real close, the petals almost form a heart in the center. And that's why they call him a heart. Um, he is my favorite of all the varieties of red roses. A heart rose is my favorite. And it's just because he gets so big and showy and he's really hardy. Um, now he is a deeper red rose. So you will find some people don't love him quite as much as they do like a Freedom or a other red. I personally think he's fabulous. And so he, if I can't, I usually have, I have a standing of the red hearts. So I get those um, every week. We get red hearts every week. Um, several people are having trouble with it freezing. Okay, so freezing. if we are freezing, what you need to do is back out of the video and probably back out of Facebook completely and then come back in. Um, and that might help with the freezing. It's something to do with Facebook this afternoon. I'm so sorry, guys. But if it continues and you just don't feel like you can watch it, you can watch it on replay and it will not have that freezing effect. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking these roses, I'm just cutting them at an angle, and I'm just nestling them right down into this arrangement. I um, think that deep red is pretty. Mm -hmm. Cam says, I love a dark rose. I love black magic roses. Ooh, black magic is so pretty. It is a pretty rose. But now, I don't know, Cam, if you've ever used the hearts, you'll never go back because of the petal count. They're just such a big rose. It's just so big and so pretty. And these are the roses that we actually got at Valentine's Day. So when I order flowers for Valentine's Day, the heart is what I want. It's just a really, really good rose. These also have been wired. So each of these roses have been wired. Callie helped me wire them. Ooh, that's pretty. 
Um, from Rosemarie Dunlop, she says, Good afternoon, Moni. Are the hydrangeas the only flowers you use the dip on? This arrangement is just beautiful. I do. Here at my shop, hydrangeas are really the only, um, the only flowers I often use dip on. Um, and I just find that um, hydrangeas are really the only thing that I ever have any problem keeping hydrated. So those are the ones that I use dip. But now I have watched other designers and they dip every flower. So I don't think it would hurt to dip other things. But for me personally, I just dip the um, hydrangeas. Um, I think a few people came on late and were wondering why you tipped took the tips off the bells again. Okay, so I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> That's really the main thing is there's no right or wrong. I don't like the little leaves on the tips. I just find it distracting. And so to me, it's kind of like getting a haircut. Um, and you like to have your hair cl clean and straight. And, and so that's all. I just don't like them. I just don't like the tips. So I pinch them off. It does help though straighten those um, those bells will straighten up a little better um, with the tips off but it's really just my preference so it's not a right or wrong um, forever bouquets weddings and events by Julie says beautiful flower arrangement very relaxing to watch you put it together oh thank you friend thank you for being here okay so I don't know that I want these mums I might ask y'all's opinion Okay, so I have these purple mums, but I don't know that I want to use them. I have these purple mums, but do I really want them? I don't think I want them. But I am going to put some lilies in here. So I'm going to put my mums to the side. Um, I don't know. I think they look, I don't know. I think they look inexpensive, so I don't think I'm going to put them in there. Okay, next we're going to come in with some lilies. Now, when I ordered these lilies, they told that they were yellow wing lilies, but I have never seen yellow wings with the little pink um, centers. So these are also an oriental style lily. They do have fragrance, but they're not over the top fragrant. They're not as bad because they can get fragrant. They can smell the whole flower shop up. But let me show you the reason I chose to use this lily is it has a little bit of a red throat. And I thought that it would pull that red rose really well. And of course, then it has that soft yellow. And you know, I'm a yellow girl, so we gotta use some yellow because it would be hard for Monty to design anything without a touch of yellow. So I'm just taking my floral knife and I'm cutting that stem, and I might, let's try it this way. I'm gonna cut it in two pieces. So I'm gonna show you, it has one um, stem that kind of comes up here, and then this is another flower. So I'm gonna take my floral knife, and I cut it into two pieces. And what we're going to do is just nestle that right down into that foam. Um, Virginia Meredith says hi from South Australia. What causes the rose head to droop? So what happens is um, the rose, the head of the rose is really heavy, right? He's a heavy stem. He's got a really heavy head and his stem is small. It's a tiny, almost the size of a pencil. So what happens is often people don't take as good care of their flowers as they, can, as they should and they forget to water them. Did we go dark? Yeah. Um, give us just a second over here on YouTube. You know our camera. It's so lovely. Um, we went dark on YouTube. Give us just a second. So what happens is if the water source is not as good as the flowers need it to be, sometimes when you use floral foam like I did in this container, people forget to water them. And so it doesn't have enough water and it causes the stem to get limp. The stem doesn't have enough um, it's not hydrated enough to hold the head. And so the reason we wire them is because it gives it that stability. Just in case it doesn't have enough water, my stem, my head's not gonna dip because it does have that stem to hold the stability. I had a little guy over on TikTok fuss at me. You don't have to, if you would just um, process your flowers correctly, you wouldn't have to wire them. I said, I don't care. Even if I've processed them correctly, I always want to wire them. It's just something that's important to me. And you don't have to. If you don't want to, goodness gracious, don't feel like you have to. I just like that insurance. 
Um, Cam says, thank you for doing this live video. It has gotten my mind off being sick today. I oh, hate the flu. I know, Cam. I'm so sorry you're not feeling good. And what is it about the older we get, the harder um, the flu or anything is to get over? And fever is no fun. It does. It hurts all over, doesn't it? So I'm just taking those lilies and just tucking those throughout. Now the reason I chose to put the lilies in last <laughs> is because they're the most fragile. And if you bump these lilies, you're going to break a petal very easily. Break the petals and um, you will have to replace it. So the reason I chose to put the lilies last is for just that. So that they won't get bumped or bruised too easily. Now this lily is starting to open up and I am going to pull the anthers from the lily. Anytime you see a lily that has the anthers still intact, pull those out. Those have pollen and that pollen is going to get all over that flower and it's going to stain it or it's going to get all over someone's clothes and it'll stain it. So go ahead and pull the pollen out every time. Um, Miss Mary Lou says, Monty, what is the price of this arrangement if you don't mind telling us? This arrangement is a $400 arrangement. Um, so it's got lots and lots and lots of flowers in it. Um, Teresa Ann um, says, I cut my rose stems every two or three days and change the water. I've gotten a full seven to eight days of life. Fantastic. Yes, yes, yes. And that's so important. It's so important to take care of your flowers. And I'll be honest, the reason I don't take flowers home is just that. I don't want to have to take care of them. <laughs> I've got cats and dogs and children and all the things. And so I'll take care of them at the flower shop, but I don't care to take care of them at home. I love plants at home, but I don't necessarily take home fresh flowers just because I'm not a great taker care of, her, of my flowers. <laughs> so the next thing I'm going to put in is um, these are just leaves, large pretty leaves. And I am just, I loved this purpley red color and I thought that it would accent those red roses. So we're just going to take a few of these and we're just going to tuck a few in and give us just a little bit of a different texture. And Joanne Hines says, roses can get an air bubble in them that makes them droop. If you lay the whole rose in a dish pan or sink and cut the stem under water, the air bubble will usually come out within 10 or 15 minutes and it will stand up again. Oh, fantastic. What a great tip. Thank you so much. They're loving it. They're saying it's beautiful. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So you can take, this is an aspidistra leaf. I guess it's aspidistra. Um, this is just a leaf. Okay, and you could take this leaf and you can roll it over and kind of make a little bit of a loop and it almost looks like a loop of ribbon. Now the only problem with this arrangement is it's a little, um, it's big and my leaf is small. And so I'm not going to, it'll be hard for you to see um, my leaf if I tried to roll them. So I'm just gonna take some of these leaves and tuck them in deeper. Now let me show you a trick though because I don't I don't want it to necessarily stick way out. So I'm taking my snips and I am cutting a little bit of that leaf off. And then I have a longer stem that I can kind of tuck that in a little deeper. And um, so he won't necessarily be waving at you. Uh, Cam has a question for a friend. Um, with peace lilies, how do you prune them? Oh, you prune them? Ooh, mm -hmm. Cam, you got me. I'll have to look it up. I don't usually prune them. I don't keep them long enough to have to take care of them. <laughs> not a peace lily. Now, I personally am not a huge green plant person at home. We have tons of green plants here at the shop. Um, but I sell them so quick that I don't really have to take good care of them. <laughs> so, I'll have to do some research for you. Um, on how to care for them at home and the pruning and all of that. Um, Hope says, I am shocked. Where's the Solidago? I know, right? Uh -huh. I know, right? But I ha I don't have Solidago and I think I left the Astilbe in there. I got Astilbe though. It's somewhere. You it? Do you see it? It's in a vase somewhere, Victoria. Mm -hmm. 
um, I don't have Solidago. Well, we have some. But the Astilbe is so pretty, so I thought we would use the Astilbe. There it is. That is pretty, isn't it? I like the leaves though. They look masculine, don't they? They work for a man. Um, Valerie McDonald says, hello friends, cold and rainy for the third day here in New York. How Aww. is your weather? This is beautiful. It's lovely here. It's been beautiful the last couple of days. We've had really pretty, pretty weather. Um, now it's cool in the mornings, but by the afternoon it's really nice and pretty. Okay. Next, we're going to come in with our steel bee, and then we have a little more eucalyptus. That's a weird ring, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, it's different. Um, Miss Julie says this arrangement is just magical. I can picture the beautiful tiny fairies flying. Around oh, it. Julie, you're right. That would be lovely, wouldn't it? <laughs> All right. Okay, so there's our greenery. All the way around, it's pretty all the way around. Next, we're gonna come in with our astilbe. Now, astilbe reminds me a lot of Solidago, but now it's it's a much fancier, um, pretty, pretty filler flower. It's a little dainty. It's um, it's much more dainty than Solidago. So feathery and so pretty. Now, it's not as hardy, and so we don't use it as often. It's a little pricey, too. Like, Solidago is cheap. <laughs> and that's why you see me use it a lot. And, of course, it's yellow, so that makes a big difference, too. A still be not as inexpensive, but wow, oh, wow, it sure is pretty. So I'm just going to take it and use it just like a filler flower, um, just like I would solid ego. I'm just going to go all the way around in this beautiful arrangement and just nestle that a still be right down in. I'm taking my floral knife. And I'm cutting that stem at an angle. Um, Teresa, Miss Teresa, this is a four hundred dollar piece. Is that right? Yes, yeah. four hundred. Yes. Um, Miss Julie Patsius says, "I wonder if you dipped it, would it last longer?" I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's a little delicate, but I don't think that it would hurt it at all. Um, Cam asks if you've ever used bridal's wreath. Um, would it be bridal wreath spirea, like a, um, it's a blooming shrub? I actually That's used right. it last week. Is that right? Is that what you're thinking, Cam? Um, Jody Rand on YouTube says, I love the color combinations. Very elegant. The branches add so much interest as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Oh, that will still be so pretty. I think a few folks have said, oh, Miss Rhea says it's a beautiful color combination and has a real vintage look. Yes, isn't that pretty? I, lo I love the, it, it does remind you kind of the, um, what is it? Very vintage, kind of the maroons and the pinks and the peaches and. Oh, yes, that, that is what Cam was talking about. Yes, Cam, I used it last week. Um, and I used it, what was it, Thursday of last week? We did, it was a live here on Facebook and YouTube. It was with the daffodils um, and the forsythia. Um, but I chose not to, I have, I can go and cut it, but I chose not to use it today in this arrangement because it, of its longevity. It's just not real happy in foam, so I chose not to use it today. Um, Miss Valerie says, a stilby grows all over her garden. She can't wait for it to bloom this year. She has white, red, pink, and lavender. Does it come back, Miss Valerie? And where is she located? I bet she's in a cooler state than we are. We're so hot. I know that when we went to New York City, you know, I'm always looking at all the flowers and all the things that are growing. And um, we went to New York a couple of summers ago. I think you were with us, Victoria. Have I've never been, been to New York. You haven't been to New York. You weren't. It but was Catherine. Um, anyway, they have it just growing in the flower beds. It's so pretty. Like, it's so pretty. 
but it's not like the humidity here. So I don't know. I don't know if it, it does get hot. Oh, Miss Valerie says she's from Pennsylvania, and yes, it comes back every year. Wow, that is so fun. I don't know how happy it would be in Mississippi, but oh, I would love it to come back. All right, guys, there is our arrangement. Um, so it's very full and it's very heavy. <laughs> Um, but it does include, I think we went over it, but it includes these beautiful moms that look like dahlias. It has a red heart rose, a garden peach rose, esmeralda, um, green hydrangeas, the green trick, bells of Ireland, the um, yellow wing lilies, a still bee, which is the um, white filler flower. What else? It has the aspidistra leaves or the cast iron leaf. Um, it has um, Iliagnus, seeded eucalyptus. Let's come up around the bottom a little bit more with the eucalyptus. And it is finished. Um, Valerie says it blooms in the shade. It doesn't mind the humidity, though. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I don't have much shade at my house. I have lots and lots of sunshine, not a whole lot of shade. Shirley Johnson asks if she's missed the Gerber Daisy arrangement. I, ha I have not done one yet. I will make one for you, friend. We could have done that today. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. But yes, we'll make one for you. Uh, Manuel says, because of your ribbon bow school, I'm wrapping up wine bottles with style. Look at you, friend. I'm so glad. I have a friend in Minnesota. She worked here. Her Callie is her aunt. It's Kayla. And so Kayla's so funny, she went to start working at a flower shop in Minnesota. And she said, Monty, they don't even have ribbon. And I'm like, what? How could you live without ribbon? It's so interesting to me though, that different places do things so differently. And she said, I had to teach them to put bows on things. <laughs> and so that was kind of fun. Um, she said, because they have never put lots of ribbon. And if they did ribbon, they only did one um, variety of ribbon at a time. You know, if they made a bow, it was only of, a, of one um, style of ribbon. And so she's had to get fancy in Minnesota mm -hmm. <laughs> with her ribbons. But she's had more fun doing ribbons and bows. Um, Doris Alanis asks if this is for a special occasion. It is, yes. This is a sympathy arrangement. It will go to the home. Um, Valerie says, if anyone is on YouTube, there is a tour of the Philadelphia Flower Show. It is so pretty and such unique creations. We will have to go and look at that. Thank you for letting us know. Um, on YouTube, Larry Wells says, I love this. It would be beautiful for a wedding. Yes, it would be lovely for a wedding. I agree. And Donna says, love it. Great job. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. No, no. All right. There we go. It's done. It's done. I'll have to take it outside and get a pretty picture mm -hmm. so that you can see it. But it is um, all the way around. There's pretty flowers all the way around. Yep, they're saying it's very, very pretty. They hey, guys, lots of thank nice you. Things. Thank you, thank you. Are there any more questions, Miss Victoria, before we no. call it an evening? I, I don't think so. All right, guys, thank y'all so much for being here. Thank you, thank you. If you enjoyed this video, would you please give us a thumbs up or a heart? What that does is it helps people to see us, and you can do that both here on Facebook and over on YouTube. I appreciate you all so much for being here. If you have any more questions, you know you can always ask. You can drop it here in the comments, both on YouTube or Facebook, or on Facebook, you can send it in Messenger, and I'm so happy to answer any questions you might have. If you do me a great big favor, sprinkle this video for me so that other people can see it. And Victoria and I will be back tomorrow to make another arrangement. I'm going to take this guy outside and take a pretty picture so that you can see it. And we will see you. I'll be back in the morning at 8.30.